All right, Internet, let's talk about another Stephen King movie adaptation. In 1922, I murdered my wife. 1922 was directed by Zach Hilditch and stars Thomas Jane, Molly Parker, and Dylan Schmidt. And it tells the story of a man who murders his wife in order to hold on to the land that she's trying to sell. Based on a Stephen King novella, part of a, an anthology called Full Dark No Stars. I'm not gonna do the entire review like this, because that will require me putting subtitles down here. I'm not gonna do the entire review that way because you can see how that would be fucking annoying, right? It's a pretty good year for Stephen King, honestly. Like, this is the third adaptation we've gotten of his work this year, and all of them have been. 1922 is the latest, and it's a Netflix exclusive, much like Gerald's Game. In case you weren't able to understand what I was saying, it tells a story of a farmer who kills his wife in order to hold on to land that she's trying to sell. This is an interesting movie because unlike Gerald's Game and It, I knew nothing of this. I never read 1922. I... I never read Gerald's Game, but I knew the plot of it. I knew nothing of 1922, and so when I finally got around to watching it today, I didn't really expect it to be so very much like Edgar Allan Poe. It definitely takes a lot of inspiration from the Telltale Heart and, and stories like that, where the main protagonist is racked with guilt and haunted by their actions. And I didn't hate it. It wasn't bad. I actually think it was quite well made, but it's just so damn unpleasant. This whole movie is just such a miserable film. And of the three adaptations this year, this one was definitely my least favorite, I think. But like I said, it's not a bad movie. I really don't even know what else to preface this with, so I'm just gonna dive right in. Like I said, 1922 is very well made. It is very well shot. It does an excellent job of building a very rural gothic atmosphere, which I'm a sucker for. I think that the aesthetic of this film is fucking beautiful. It's set in 1922 in Nebraska. Shockingly not Maine, like most Stephen King stories. But overall, in terms of cinematography and in terms of editing, in terms of the slow pacing of this film, I think this movie does a really good job at what it's trying to convey, which is this very bleak, nasty, gritty, gothic atmosphere. And what it does with that, it does very well. The, like I said, the, the aesthetic of this movie is absolutely brilliant. The performances as well are very believable, even though Thomas Jane's inability to open his fucking mouth drove me to near insanity. I like that the performances in this movie are pretty restricted. They're not just diving right into the madness. It's a very slow burn. It's a very slow rot that you're seeing this family go through and these two people who commit this murder go through. That to me is fascinating. That's a really interesting approach to this. I love that they didn't just jump right into the whole like they're crazy and they're racked with guilt and it slowly eats at them over months and months and months and months and I think that is really cool. I think that the way they portrayed the slow rot of this family dynamic is really interesting and really different. I appreciated that a lot. I did not appreciate Thomas Jane's fucking accent. I had to literally turn closed captions on Netflix for this because I could not understand a word he was saying. Pray as lemonade, Sheriff. Man's pride was man's land. Inside every man, a conniving man. Everything he says, he talks like this, and everything he says, he refuses to part his teeth for. And. I was going to blow my fucking brains out. I do really like the story of this. I think it's a really interesting story watching these people who are not exactly unsympathetic. Even when they're committing these horrible acts, they always manage to pull the sympathy back at the last second. Right before they cross that line, they pull it right back in. And it's really interesting to see that. It's really interesting to see such a mean-spirited film have characters who are not completely awful. They're pretty fucking bad, don't get me wrong. But they're not... There's always something that you can sort of understand in them. In addition to the Telltale Heart, like I said, this movie almost reminded me a bit of Gone Girl. Weird as that is to say, considering this was written years, years, years before that. But it has a lot of the same elements in terms of the gothic feel and in terms of the bleak, nihilistic, mean-spirited aesthetic that this movie has. That mean-spiritedness, though, is personally for me where this movie lost me. I felt that it was a little too far in that, between just the fact that these characters are pretty awful, like, almost everyone in this film is a pretty awful person, and despite the fact that you can understand them, they're still pretty fucking awful, and it's really hard to root for them. Um, 
just with, between that and the constant unnecessary shots of animal violence, it just, it didn't really vibe with me. That's not my type of thing. That's for me where my line is. And because of that, I was not super in love with this movie the way I was with something like Gerald's Game or something like It. It definitely does a good job at the overall tone that Stephen King builds with a lot of his works, and the questionably supernatural elements that are in this film are really well executed. I just couldn't deal with the overall nastiness that this movie had from beginning to end. It's just not my cup of tea. And I'm, I'm, I'm a sucker for a good depressing as fuck film. I mean, look at me. I love Martyrs. I think it's one of the best films ever made. But Martyrs captures a certain elegance and a certain beauty. Martyrs has characters you can root for, and this is a film that doesn't really. And when you're left with characters who you're not really able to root for and are just doing these awful things to being generally awful people, even if you can understand their logic, it just didn't personally vibe for me. It's not a bad movie by any means. It's actually quite good, but... It just didn't resonate with me on the same level that Gerald's Game and It did. And I'm gonna say that 1922 would be good for fans of Stephen King's works, good for fans of Full Dark No Stars for sure, and good for fans of this year's Stephen King adaptations. It just wasn't really for me. It's really well shot, it's really well acted, despite Thomas Jane's talking. And if you can stand all the mean-spirited just nastiness that it throws at you, I think you'll enjoy this movie totally fine. Just not my cup of tea. And that's really all I have to say about that. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching, as always. And you can click down there and like and comment, subscribe. And my next video is going to be something real surprising for you all, so stay tuned.